Welcome to the fourth video in a series of videos about job order cost accounting. If you haven't seen the previous video, I highly recommend you watch it. You can find the link to it in the description below. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about overhead cost flow. So in the past videos, we talked about material cost flow and labor cost flow. And in those examples, we saw that there were indirect material costs and indirect labor costs that were being used in the flow, but we did not assign them directly to the job because we know they are overhead. So with that information, we know overhead costs include indirect material costs and indirect labor costs and other costs such as supplies, utilities, and others like factory depreciation. So indirect labor and indirect material does not constitute the entire overhead although it might, but it's highly unlikely. We also have other costs like supplies and utilities and etc. So in this case, for example, for supplies, utilities, and others, what happens is that we credit utilities payable and we debit factory overhead. And for other types of expenses like accumulated depreci depreciation, we credit accumulated depreciation and we debit factory overhead. So it's the same idea as a while ago that we... We transfer the cost to the factory overhead account. Anything that's considered factory overhead, we transfer it to the factory overhead account by debiting it and by crediting whatever it was. If you remember in the indirect material, we credited raw materials inventory and we transferred it to factory overhead by debiting factory overhead. Same thing with the indirect labor costs. We did that with factory payroll. We credited it and we transferred the cost to the factory overhead. So same idea here, we're just lumping it all in the factory overhead and you will see why later on. So you may ask, what's different from material cost flow, labor cost flow, and overhead cost flow? So labor and material, they're basically the same like I mentioned in the third video, but overhead cost flow is different because if you notice, for direct materials and for direct labor, we know where they are going directly. That's why they're going. they're called direct in the first place. We know in what jobs they're going in, we know in what, what time they went in there, and all those data, we know where they are. But for indirect materials, indirect labor and factory overhead, do we really know where they're going? We might say we used $500 of nails in the month of January, but do we know in which jobs did we use them? They're too small to track. So we actually don't know where they go. So how do we solve this problem? So how do we apply overhead to a job if we don't know where it goes? Well, this is why we have something called the allocation base. So the allocation base is basically where we base our overhead. Okay, so it's kind of confusing now, so I'm going to explain it through an example. So let's say in 2015, we have a direct labor cost of $1,000, and we have a total factory overhead of $20,000. And as managers, we say that our allocation base is our direct labor cost, meaning our factory overhead that we apply to jobs will depend on our direct labor cost. So from this data, we can tell that for every $1 spent on direct labor, we spend $20 on our total factory overhead. So that's basically how we got that. We divided 20,000 by 1,000, we got 20. And this 20 is what we call the predetermined overhead rate. So what is this? So basically, this is the rate that we multiply our allocation base with to get how much overhead do we apply to certain jobs. So now, instead of not knowing where everything goes, we now have certain rates for every job, depending, of course, on how you as a manager choose to allocate, um, what allocation basis you choose to use, it all depends on that, but let's say for this example that we choose to use that same predetermined overhead rate for all our jobs. So now it's easy to find how much is our factory overhead per job since our direct labor cost will be given through the job order accounting system. Whatever is the direct labor cost of job 1, we just multiply it by 20, that's its factory overhead. Whatever is the direct labor cost of job 2, we multiply it by 20, we get its factory overhead, and so on and so forth. So going back to the example, let's say what if job two's labor, direct labor cost is $1,000 and we know our predetermined overhead rate is 20, so all we do is multiply 1,000 by 20 and what we get there is 20,000. So now if you see, when we apply factory overhead, we don't debit it 
We don't throw it into the factory overhead account anymore. We take it away from the factory overhead account and we put it in the work in process inventory of whatever job we're assigning it to. So now you see a while ago, what we were doing is we were piling up the costs into the factory overhead account. We were debiting it because it's an expense account, debiting it adds on it. So we were adding up to the factory overhead account. We were putting all the indirect materials, all the indirect labor, all the supplies expense, all the utilities expense. We're putting it all in the factory overhead. So at the end of the period, we can use our predetermined overhead rate to apply this and transfer the cost from our factory overhead into the specific jobs depending on what our predetermined overhead rate is. So that's basically it. So what we're doing here is we're applying overhead now by crediting the factory overhead because we're taking away and we're transferring that cost into the jobs. I repeat it again, we're transferring now the factory overhead into the job. We're not putting it into factory overhead anymore. What we're doing is we're transferring the cost using our POHR. So basically that's it for overhead costs. I hope you understood that. So basically summary again is that what we're doing now is we're applying overhead on each individual job because last time what we did was we were transferring indirect costs into the factory overhead account. What we're doing now is we're transferring cost from the factory overhead account and we're putting it into the jobs. So that way we now have data for how much did we spend on direct labor on job two, how much did we spend on direct material on job two, and how much did we spend on factory overhead on job two. I hope that all made sense and I know some of you might think what if what we applied is not equal to how much factory overhead we actually got? What if we applied 100,000 worth of factory head today and then when we look at our records, we only actually incurred 90,000? What do we do? Well, we're going to discuss that in a later video and you can find that in the link in the description below. The next video is actually a summary of all this and we're going to discuss that, that specific part at the last video in lesson 6. So until then, see you and I hope you learned something.